You know, I don't think that you can appreciate your health fully until your health is threatened, right? It's an old saying that we've all heard, but, and welcome back to the Dawn Show. We're talking about the Affordable Care Act um, and what it means to you with Kevin Flynn, president of Healthcare Advocates. And Kevin, I wanna touch base on, you know, the mandate for employers. Um, you mentioned earlier that that doesn't start until 2015, right. but there's a lot of good information that I know that you have for people who feel like, well, I'm gainfully employed, so I don't have to worry about it. That's true. For the people that are employed, you're not having to worry about this right now, particularly because it's your employer's headache. They're the ones who have to look at the plan, figure out is it uh, compliant with Obamacare or not. So right now your HR manager is pulling out her hair trying to figure out how it works. <laughs> But there is something to be careful of. Um, a study by McKinsey and Company suggested that about 30% of companies are thinking with, you know, around the 50 person uh, employee life, are thinking of dropping health care. The reason is it's going to cost too much. There's the, the companies are saying, I'll take the penalty because I can't afford to stay in business otherwise. So what you as an employee might want to do is around March, April, start asking your employer, where is our insurance going to be next year? Are you thinking of dropping it for everybody? Because if that's the situation, you need to start thinking now about what you're going to do next year. And that's just being smart and preventative. We're not saying that your employer is going to drop it, but we have seen a number of employers who are going to drop it. And that's actually why it was pushed back to 2015, because all of a sudden the government heard, one, the regulations, they're too confusing for the insurance companies and the employer groups to figure out to go ahead and operate successfully under the compliance with the Affordable Health Care Act. The other problem was the employers are saying, we can't afford it. That's why there's that whole new um, class of employees, the under 30 hours a week employees. Right, because and we've, we've seen companies do that, where yes. they had 53 employees and then they, they actually cut back, which is, you know, you hate to hear that and it's yes. bad for the economy. Um, so obviously a lot of kinks with Obamacare that they, they need to work out. There are kinks. So if you work in a smaller company between 50 and 100 employees, you might want to ask your HR person, are you still offering insurance next year? Do I have anything to worry about? Just because you don't want to come up on the deadline of next year only to find that your family is no longer being covered by your employer and you have to scramble for some sort of insurance. So if somebody's employer says, I don't know, would they be honest and say, nah, we're not going to do that? Would, I mean, how do you really know? And what if you feel like, you know what, they're going to bail on this, they're going to take the penalty because it's, it's actually more cost effective, then what do you do? Well, then you go to healthcare.gov or ehealthinsurance.com. If your employer decides not to uh, become healthcare compliant or offer insurance, they'll just be penalized, or they're cutting back under 50 so that they don't have to, um, to do that, you can go and you're then stuck with the individual mandate, which is you go to your healthcare.gov or you call a Blue Cross or an Aetna and you have to obtain insurance yourself. And so, you know, we've heard a lot in the headlines of people saying, well, can I keep my current plan? And then President Obama said, yes, you can. And then there were problems with that. Um, can people just keep their current plan? Is it going to cost them more? Well, unfortunately, that decision's not up to them. Whether or not an insurance company is going to keep the plan is under the discretion of one entity, and that is the insurance right. company. The way it, it was is a lot of these plans were not compliant with the Affordable Health Care Act, and there are also a lot of plans. Let's take Blue Cross Special Care. Blue Cross is not for profit, so they had a duty to do something for the community. So they offered the special care plan to help those high risk people, those who were uninsurable before. But now with affordable health care here, Blue Cross is saying, well, we have the special care plan, which is meant to help people in this situation, but that's also what the Affordable Care Act is supposed to do. So we're just duplicating that which the government's already fixed. Also, we're losing money. Yeah, why not just make more profit? Exactly, so if, don't be shocked that your plan is not being grandfathered in. Do the insurance companies have the right or is there an ability to get their current plans a grandfather exception? Yes, but they don't wanna do it because they're looking at the plan, they're saying, this isn't a good profit maker. If we shift everybody over to this plan, we'll be making more money. You remember, might remember back in the times when things shifted from an indemnity plan to an HMO. Right. And insurance companies intentionally did that. They raised the cost of the indemnity so everybody would go into HMO. And all of a sudden, they saw 
greater profits. Then there's some backlash on the HMO so that everything transitioned to a PPO. Right. So that's what they're doing here. They're saying, let's get rid of the difficult plans, the plans where we're not making much money or we're actually losing money. We'll shift people over into these other plans where it's a larger pool of people will have better profits. Gotcha. Better profits, but not necessarily better care. More with Kevin when we come right back. You are watching The Dawn Show, and I hope that this show on the Affordable Care Act um, helps to educate you and your loved ones because, of course, nothing is more important than your health. You know, I talk about my mom all the time back with Kevin um, in the wheelchair with this mystery illness. And, of course, we all have that loved one. We think, oh, my goodness, how is Obamacare going to affect my child, my mother, so, me, so on and so forth? I mean, so it's frightening. And you get angry because all, all of these glitches are happening and was it worth it? So we have all of those questions, but I hope that in some small way we've answered a lot of questions too, right. Kevin. Well, let's start with healthcare.gov. There have been glitches over the past yeah. month or so. And so if you're at home, and there are two questions you have to ask yourself. First is, because of the glitches, I think I'm enrolled for January 1. Am I actually enrolled? The only way you're really going to know is contact your insurance company and say, hi, I'm supposed to be effective January 1st. Will I be? I enrolled via healthcare.gov, and I know that not all the data was passed. Another thing which you're going to want to do is just check. If you think you're eligible for a subsidy, check with the subsidy. Maybe try an, a new enrollment. Don't go through with it, please. Because as the glitches get fixed, premium data has been changing. That was one of the glitches that occurred, which is they weren't giving accurate premiums to people. So let's back up. So in other words, I think that people just have to consider this has been a hot mess, a yes. lot of computer glitches, a lot of problems. So double check and triple check. Make sure. And because the, it's important. Yes. And the best way to check is go directly to the insurance company say, am I effective for January 1st? and what actually is the premium, and that's the best way. And so back to the premiums, so how are they calculated? Uh, the, well, they're calculated based upon New Jersey. They're, it's called community rating. Now, there are two different rating systems. Some are by your age. What are your age brackets? You know, you have the, the 20 to 35-year-old bracket, um, 35 to 50, and so forth. But, but it's where you Obamacare, live, right, as well? well. That, that becomes community rating, yes. So under Obamacare, it's community rating. So you have an age bracket of, let's say, 20 to 35 in a specific zip code. So everybody in that zip code for that age group is going to be having the same premium for the same plan. Interestingly, Delaware is considered one community rating. New Jersey is considered one community rating. Uh, Pennsylvania has three. So the, the rates that you have for, say, two different 30-year-old people are going to be different if you're in Delaware, New Jersey, or Pennsylvania, or one of the three zones in Pennsylvania. So in Pennsylvania, for example, you have a lot of older Americans and seniors. So we're probably going to be seeing the same thing as, you know, remember in New York City, they had all these people saying being registered for their auto insurance in Virginia yes. because the rates were lower. It's similar to that, no? I'm sure you'll be seeing some, hey, let's use mom's address. Uh -huh. So I'm sure you'll be seeing that. So some people will be trying to work the system by using a different address and might find lower premiums in rural Virginia as opposed to Manhattan. Things We're down to our final minute, Kevin. I mean, what's the most important um, factor that you want people to know? This is your business and right. you're, you're an advocate. You don't, have, you, know, you don't have a stake in this per se. The so. two most important things are don't go and play craps with your life. Get insured. You're helping, one, the society because your premiums, if you're not using it, help offset others. But more than that, you don't want to risk being in an accident, getting poked in the eye, and all of a sudden you've now lost an eye because you don't have insurance and they wouldn't fix it for you. Also, when you run across problems, whether it be access to insurance, access to a doctor, don't give up. First, be your own advocate. Don't be bullied by the system. You have rights. Be the bully in the system. And if you can't figure out how to get there because it, it is a, a maze, Yes. Contact an advocate to help you through, but whatever you do, don't give up on yourself. And Kevin, thank you so much. It's a great message. Don't give up on yourself and have a great one, everybody. <laughs>